Welcome to examsavi.com. In today's tutorial class, we'll see semiconductor devices. So the topics to be discussed are what is mean by semiconductor and what is the basic diode concepts like intrinsic semiconductor, extrinsic semiconductor, the energy band diagram of semiconductors. In that we'll see p-type semiconductor and n-type semiconductor. First of all, what is mean by semiconductor? Semiconductors or materials which whose electrical properties will lie between conductors and insulators. So semiconductor is a material that has unique properties in, it, in the way it reacts to electric current. It has much lower resistance to the flow of electrical current in one direction when compared to other. Example here like silicon and germanium we can say semiconductor. The basic diode concepts. First we will see what is intrinsic semiconductor. Intrinsic semiconductor or the crystals of pure elements like germanium and silicon. The number density of electrons which will be equal to the whole density number and also the electrical conductivity of intrinsic semiconductor is low. Even the electrical conductivity we can say how it depends based on temperature. So that is what an intrinsic semiconductor at equilibrium condition the whole density which will be equal the whole density which will be equal to electron density. An extrinsic semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductor is an improved intrinsic semiconductor with little impurity added to intrinsic. We'll get extrinsic semiconductor. Here the number of electron density will not be equal to the number of hole density. And also the electrical conductivity compared to intrinsic it has high. Here also it depends on temperature as well as the impurity what we added to make extrinsic. So it, it, here it alters the electrical property and improves the conductivity. We will see the energy band diagram mainly for insulator, semiconductor and conductor. We will see one by one each. Insulators is nothing but the process in which no free charge carriers and thus it is called as non-conductive. So here the band diagram, energy band diagram for insulator indicates electrons will be completely filled in valence band. The gap between valence band and the next band, conduction band, is much large. We can see the difference how large it is. So the electrons will be filled completely in valence band and the band difference is more in case of insulator and semiconductor. We will see the semiconductor. Semiconductors are solids which lie between the conductivity of conductors and insulators. If it is so, then it is semiconductor. Here the energy band diagram for semiconductor indicates the gap to the conduction band from valence band is small when compared to insulator. Here we can see the difference. Here the gap is more and here the gap is less. So comparatively it is less. And also at room temperature, the valence band is almost completely filled. A few electrons will be missing in case of valence band because they acquire large thermal energy to cross the gap in case of conduction band. Why it is so means in order to cross the band gap between conduction band and valence band. As a result, they can move under the influence of external electric field. So if we apply external electric field, the electrons can move. And the holes will be left as it is in the valence band. That will be called as the mobile charge carriers, but it will behave like a positive charge carriers. 
and next finally we will see conductor. Conductors generally are substance which have the property to pose different types of energy that is conductor and we will see the band diagram energy band diagram for conductor. The valence band is partially filled in case of conductor here the valence band it, it will be filled partially and since there are numerous empty levels the electrons are free to move under the influence of electric field because it is partially filled. Here we have taken metal as an example for conductor that is what energy band diagram and next we will see doping. For making external conductor we need to add some impurities and that is nothing but a doping. Adding of impurities to intrinsic semiconductor is called doping. Here the concept of like majority carriers and minority carriers plays a role in this device. So majority carrier is the carrier type in a doped semiconductor with highest concentration. And in case of minority carrier, it will be having lower concentration compared to majority carriers. And next is the n-type semiconductor. If we add some pentavalent impurities like arsenium, phosphorus, which contributes a free electrons, so that is n-type semiconductor to an intrinsic. So, phosphorus maybe we can add like phosphine gas, but n type in the n type material we have majority carriers as electrons and that will be indicated with minus symbol and minority carriers will be holes. This will be indicated in diagrammatic representation. Here antimony we have taken this. So, arsenium, phosphorus, and antimony are pentavalent impurities. So, we have taken antimony. It indicates a type semiconductor. And next, P type semiconductor. Here we are taking addition of trivalent impurities such as aluminium, boron, and gallium to intrinsic semiconductor, which creates some deficiencies in case of valence electrons. So, those deficiencies will be called as holes. So, because of that, the majority carriers will be holes. In case of p-type semiconductor and minority carriers will be an electrons so the majority will be indicated as holes that will be in plus plus symbol here we can take boron diboron gas to diffuse into silicon material and that is what a semiconductor device is thank you for watching this video for more you can visit examsavi.com